So what we want to do now is to take a broader look at relations between Muslims and other groups in Europe where the Muslim community makes up some 5% of the population. That is about 38 million people. And to do that, we're joined by Delancey Gustin. She's a specialist on immigration issues at the German Marshall Fund of the United States, an organization that promotes greater cooperation between North America and Europe. And she joins us from Washington, D.C. Um, Delancey, we just saw um, in that story uh, a case in Dresden, Germany, in which there are accusations of discrimination against Muslims. How widespread is discrimination? Well, I think, unfortunately, these violent um, acts against people of other races or religions are ubiquitous. And since this was such an extraordinary case, it made headlines across Germany, sparked a lot of discussions, and even made a lot of headlines in international news. And so what it did was raise awareness of the fact that there are these episodes of xenophobic violence against minority groups in Germany. But even though this is not a, um, an isolated case, it was an extraordinary one because of the circumstances. And is this xenophobic violence based solely on religion, or is it also to do with cultural issues, perhaps even racial issues? Well, I think what we have here is a particular case because Dresden is part of the former East Germany. And in Dresden, there are less than 2% of the population which is of a migrant background. And so the fact is that um, the ethnic German population that lives there and has lived there um, has not had much exposure to people of other cultures, of other religions. And in Western Germany, this is not the case. So we actually have closer to um, 5% of the population which is of migrant background and in some regions it's much higher where there is a lot of manufacturing and other services and where the economy is very healthy. And so the, it also depends on how much exposure there is between the different groups. And there is also a perception that the situation for Muslims in France is also bad yet Muslims there proudly describe themselves as French. Can you shed some light on this for us? Sure, absolutely. Just as you say, um, when Muslims are interviewed in France, they say that, yes, they feel French, which isn't necessarily the case in places like Germany. But unfortunately, there are a lot of problems for Muslims in France, largely the fact that they are socio-demographically socio um, disadvantaged, so they have higher unemployment rates. They are disproportionately living in the banlieue, in um, the suburbs of large cities. And they generally have um, issues finding um, employment. So there are issues that um, there's discrimination in the workplace when, um, when resumes have a, um, a name that's of, of a Muslim um, background. But at the same time, they very much play into the, um, the um, ideals of the French Republic and do feel French. And what about British Muslims? How are they faring? British Muslims are um, also facing issues of integration. Of course, these um, people, as in France and some in Germany, are of the second or third generation. So really, they're not immigrants, but they are, um, of course, of a um, religious group that's um, a minority in the country. And um, British respondents in a public opinion survey that we do, Transatlantic Trends Immigration, seem to be very skeptical about ongoing immigration, but also skeptical about the integration of um, minority groups in, um, in the UK as well. Okay, Delancey, Gustin, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.